Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing this morning? Happy Wednesday to you. How's everybody doing? How y'all doing this morning? Put my eyes on. There we go. What's up, Nikki, Miss Antoinette, Miss Joe, Tashira, Miss Tammy, Brother Winford, Miss Sheila, Miss Angela. What's up, y'all? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Miss Yolanda. You is kind, you is smart. <laughs> yeah. Come on, y'all, finish it. You is kind. You is smart. <laughs> Can y'all hear me all right? <laughs> Can y'all hear me? <laughs> he said, I is warm. How y'all doing this morning? Y'all all right? <laughs> you is that's right, Miss Barbara. You was important. <laughs> yeah, we gonna we're gonna we're gonna repeat that phrase. That's gonna be our phrase of encouragement for the rest of this series. Every Sunday, we gonna say we gonna say that we gonna make we gonna encourage somebody. <laughs> Every Sunday, we're going to encourage somebody. <laughs> That's right. That's what we do at Community Church. We encourage people, man. Yeah, amen. We're going to encourage somebody every 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 Sunday for the rest of this phrase, for the rest of this series. Uh, That's right. Because God is good, but sometimes people are ugly. Amen. 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 I hope y'all have been enjoying our series, man, as much as I have. Uh, I, I've really, really been enjoying it. Uh, been been enjoying my time studying for it. Been enjoying my time uh, teaching on it. Uh, if you hadn't done so already, hit that share button. Y'all know how we roll. If you're on YouTube, give that thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, Dr. A. Nathan Young and Community Church, uh, please support the mission, support the vision uh, by hitting that subscribe button, by hitting that share button. If you enjoy it, chances are somebody on your timeline, somebody you're connected to will as well. Big shouts out to Miss Isha. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we miss you. Hope that all is well, man, uh, with you uh, and and your family. Uh, all of you, man, uh, thank y'all for riding with me this morning. It's hump day, y'all. Come on. Somebody say, I can't believe we're here already. Yeah, we are here already. Good. Bless the Lord, Miss Barbara. Glad that the surgery uh, was successful. Uh, thank God for you, one of one of our faithful jump starters. Uh, one of our faithful jump starters. Somebody said they're gonna give me a t-shirt that say you is kind, you is smart. <laughs> we started, we're talking about man, when people hurt. When people hurt. Uh and and you know, a, a lot of things can hurt. Uh, but how many of you know? There's no hurt like people hurt. Come on, somebody. Uh, there, there's no hurt uh, like people hurt. Uh, like, like when the people who you love uh, hurt you. Uh, you. You can withstand a lot of pain. You can withstand a lot of different types of pain. Uh, but when the people you love cause you pain, come on, uh, when the people in your life are hurting you, uh, are the source of your pain, 
Uh, come on. How many of you know that there's no pain uh, like that kind of pain? Uh, and yesterday we we started talking about how to deal with that pain. Norris Williams, I, I pray for you, bro. I, I thought about you last night for whatever reason. I don't know why. Uh, but I thought about you last night, man. Glad to see you uh, and lifted you up to the Lord, my brother. Uh, hope that all is well. Uh, I asked Joyce about you too. Uh, but but we started talking about uh, how to deal with that pain. Um, and and we, we were looking at it and we talked about how we started talking about roots of bitterness. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 14 and 15. Uh, make every effort. We talked about making every effort, doing everything you can uh, to live in peace with everyone. We talked about the importance of doing everything you can. That means you you work as hard as you can uh, to live in peace uh, with everyone. Uh, you do everything in you. I was talking with my, I, I do a a uh, personal development class on Tuesdays. And it was just good to hear some testimonies last night of some folks who are applying the principles that we are learning about what to do with anger and what to do with hurt, uh, you know, pausing before you respond. Uh, and they were telling me how they were growing and what they were learning through by, 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 by applying those principles and how it was blessing their life, and it was just good to hear uh, that when you make every effort uh, to live in peace, uh, when you don't respond to those feelings of, of of anger right away, well, let me not say respond, when you don't react, that's a better word, because uh, we talked Sunday about the difference between reacting and responding, and when you don't react, but when you, you know, pause and and then wait and then respond uh somebody was told me that it, it blessed them and how they dealt with their employees uh and and you know they were able to not lash out uh but think about the approach that they were going to take to different situations uh it's making that effort making that effort it doesn't mean that you don't address situations it doesn't mean that you ignore problems, uh, but what it means is you allow the Holy Spirit to be your guide in how you approach problems. Uh, some stuff that means you're going to ignore it because it's not it's not a big enough deal for you to disturb the peace. But then other stuff that that means that you can't ignore it because sometimes listen, peace at all costs ain't peace. Lord have mercy. Sometimes you you have to disturb the peace in order to have peace long term. And, and, and I got to say this for so many people, you know, we 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 want peace and we're we're willing to pay any cost in order to get it. And, and the problem with that is, is is what that means is I will allow people to do things to me. Uh, that disturbed my peace, and I will say nothing about it in order to maintain the peace between me and them. But how many of you know that sometimes if I maintain the peace between me and them, then I disturb the peace in my own spirit? Who, Because I maintain the peace between me and them, I disturb the peace in my own mind. Because while there is this, this while there is this uh, false uh, perception of peace between me and them, I don't have any peace Be because I'm I'm lying when I say I'm all right. Lord have mercy. I, can can I use that word? I, I'm I'm not I'm not being honest when I say nothing's wrong with me. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting up resentment. I'm growing bitter. Why? 
because there are unresolved issues in the relationship. Lord have mercy. Come on. That, that I, I don't want to address. So when he says make every effort, sometimes, yes, that effort is ignoring the, the small offenses. But other times that making that effort means working through the offenses. It means I don't react based on my feelings, but I also don't ignore what I've got going on inside of me, the fact that 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 there was something that you did to me, some way you violated me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Come on, a boundary that you crossed. Huh? A hurt that happened. Sometimes it means that I have to address it in order to have peace. So you, 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 I, I see people in relationships, whether it's on the job or in the home or in, in the church or elsewhere, where there's this false perception of peace, where we're, we're acting like everything is okay. Huh? And, and, and we're, we're dying inside. Come on. And, and for some of us, you ready for this? Buckle up. For some of us, I'm going to just say it. We blame our cowardice on holiness. Woo! I'm going to say it again. We blame our cowardice on holiness, on being Christ-like. Lord, have mercy. When, when, when the truth is, the fact that we won't address what needs to be addressed has nothing to do with the Lord, but has everything to do with the fact that we're either afraid, come on, or the situation is too convenient. for us to address what needs to be addressed. Come on, somebody. And what we have to do, the Bible commands us, make every effort to live in peace. Sometimes you have to work through that problem or peace cannot be attained. Sometimes you have to work through that difficulty with the other person in the relationship so that peace can be attained. That doesn't mean we have to argue. That doesn't mean we have to fight. That doesn't mean it has to be toxic. But what it does mean is we have to establish boundaries. We have to admit our faults. We have to apologize. We have to be brave enough and courageous enough to say, hey, when you did that the other day, that cut me, man. That hurt me. I, I, that, that was wrong. Now, 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 let me tell you where we oftentimes get wrong at. We, we, we approach the situation with our hands up. What do you mean, Pastor? We, we approach the situation in a demanding way. What's a demanding way? When I walk up to you and tell you, you owe me an apology. What I just said was either you apologize to me or, or, or you can get it. <laughs> See, you got to watch your approach. You got to watch your approach. A better way to do that instead of walking up saying, you owe me an apology. How do I approach it, Pastor? You approach it in a way that they can receive it. By saying, I, I, I need to talk to you about something. I need to talk to you about, about, about something that, that happened the other day and then go into it. 
instead of approaching them saying, you owe me. Think about that. You owe me. Even your first response would be, I don't, I don't owe you anything. Am I making sense to you all? See, you, you have to make it. Well, Pastor, that's too much. I'd rather just say what I got to say. Yeah, you say what you got to say. That's why you always get what you get. That's why where the relationship could have been saved, it's always broken. And instead of moving forward, we get bogged down in it. Whoo! Am I helping in it? He says, you got to make every effort. Sometimes that's going to that's gonna mean I got to change some stuff about me. Even Get this. Even though I'm the one who's been wounded. My Lord. Even though I'm the one who's been hurt. I, 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 I have, well, why do I have to change something if, if, if I'm not in the wrong? Well, what you, because what you don't want to do is multiply the injury by how you approach the, the person who, who made the injury. You remember, make every effort to live in peace. And, and sometimes your approach can hurt the situation more than it helps the situation. Your goal is peace. And so while you have to be comf confident enough to make the approach, you have to be wise about how you make it. And listen, make every effort. Another pastor says, do all that is within you. Because sometimes people are just not going to receive it. You got to recognize that you can't control them when they don't. They're just not going to receive it. Listen, listen, let's, let's be honest. Some folk just don't want peace. That, that's why God said, do everything that is within you. Because God knew that you were going to be, have to deal with some dramatic people who love drama, who love mess, who are not satisfied unless they got some havoc going. And no matter, no, no matter how you approach, come on, somebody. I don't care how you approach a narcissistic person. If, if they are narcissistic, you are not going to get them. And no apology. Anybody ever dealt with anybody like that? No recognition of wrong. They're going to gaslight. Come on. They're going to make you feel like you're wrong for, for how you feel. They're going to turn it on you. Care how nice you are when you approach. They, they're going to blow it up. They're going to pour gas on it. And, and that's why God, and this is what you have to remember. God does not hold you accountable for what, how they respond. He holds you accountable for what you do. And you have to recognize, that's why he said, do all that is within you. How they respond is not within you. You cannot control them. Who? Come on. And sometimes you have to recognize people for who they are. Huh? And don't beat your head up against the wall trying to change them. Only God can change them. You just make sure that you continue to do everything that is within you. And listen, in, in those types of situations, well, I'm not, let me not say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. But he says, make every effort. Make every effort. 
small offenses, stuff that really don't matter. That's why you got to let your emotions calm down. That's, that's why you, you can't respond to those angry feelings. You got, you got to take a step back. Because what you're going to discover sometimes is, man, that wasn't even that big a deal. I'm so glad I ain't respond to that because now that I think about it, it wasn't worth the energy. But then there are going to be other things that just that 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 were much bigger than the small deal. Watch what he says. He says, "See to it in verse fifteen, Hebrews twelve, that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble." Talked about that yesterday. Watch what he says. And defile many. See that word defile in that passage? The root word there means stain. It means pollute. It means contaminate. Huh? See, listen. The root of bitterness, it says that, that it'll spring up. Right? We talked yesterday about how it starts producing fruit. Now, you, you have to be careful with the fruit it produces. Because I talked to you yesterday about how, you know, it, it's toxic. I talked to you yesterday about how it's bad. But, but you have to be careful because it's deceitful. Because it looks good. Whoo. What, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, I told you yesterday that, that bitter trees have, have fruit of loneliness, fruit of sickness, fruit of unforgiveness. I told you bitter trees have, have, have fruit of cutting you off from relationships. But you got to be careful because sometimes it looks good. Listen, Satan does an amazing job of making poison look tasty. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm going to say that again. He's the father of lies. He's a deceiver. And he does an amazing job of making poison look tasty. The, the, it, it, that, that bitter fruit, that, that, that fruit that defiles many, it, it looks good, y'all. What, what do you mean, Pastor? Come on, let's, it feels good to know that they know that you're still mad with them. <laughs> let's, can, can we just be honest this morning on Gemstar? It, it feels good to know that they know they're wrong and you still mad. And let's 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 go ahead and go all in and be honest. Some of you, while while you got them, you be thinking, "What what can what can I what can I milk this for?" <laughs> Don't tell me you ain't never thought it. What what I, I what they? Oh, I got them. What can I milk this for? Oh, he make it look, it, it seems, it seems, it, he makes it look good. It seems right. They wronged me. It seems right to hold on to the wrong. I feel justified by being unforgiving because of the offense. I feel justified for holding on to it because of their character. Whoo. But can I tell you, it looks good. That's right where the enemy wants you. He, he wants you to wake up every day. And some of us fall for it. He wants you to wake up every day. And 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 take another bite of that poison. Come on. 
and and it's deceptive. I I heard somebody say, bitterness and unforgiveness is is like drinking poison and hoping it'll kill your enemy. Come on, I'm gonna say it again. Bitterness and unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping that it will kill your enemy. When, when, when you think about it, it's not killing them, it's killing you. you. You're the one who's stressed. Come on. You they think about it. They they moved on. They're not worried about you. They weren't worried about you to begin with. That's why they did what they did and didn't apologize for it. You man, your blood pressure's high. You you can't go to the family function. You you're trying to put them in prison, and the only person you've locked up is yourself. It's like drinking poison and hoping it'll kill your enemy. It's not their peace being disturbed, it's yours. They're not hurt, you are. It's not affecting their relationships. They didn't, listen, they did not carry what they did to you over into the next relationship. And if they did, they just visited it upon somebody else. Certainly they didn't carry it in the form of hurt. You did. Mm. It's not, it's, it's, it's not, what they did to you is not ruining their next job. Listen, it, it's not affecting the way they raise their children. It's affecting yours. It, their stress level is not elevated. And you're going, well, Pastor, that's what makes it so unfair. Yes, you're right. So stop being so unfair to yourself, darling. Stop being so unfair to yourself, my boy. They're living their life. And you're wasting yours being angry at someone who really isn't worth it. Hmm. You, you've drank a glass of poison and now you're waiting for them to die. I hope I'm helping somebody this morning. You, you, what do I do, Pastor? You got you, you to gotta put the glass down. You got to refuse to drink. What, what does that look like, Pastor? Well, it, oftentimes when, when, when somebody's wronged us, when they've done us something, when, when people hurt us, oftentimes the, the, the reason why we feel that pain, and I'm going to let you go after this, the reason why we feel that pain but, but I have to leave you with this. I don't want to leave you hanging. And we'll pick back up here tomorrow. We feel that pain because of what we feel like they took from us. We feel like they took something from us. What, whatever they did to us, we, we feel like they took something from us that's not theirs, that wasn't theirs to take.
they 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 I I will respect. They disrespected me. Our dignity. Come on. Our, our childhood. Our loved one. What first of all, you gotta identify what they took. That's going to help you realize why you're so angry. Why you're so bitter. That's going to help you identify it. And now that you identify what they took, here's the second realization, and this is a tough one. Because whatever they took, they can never replace. They cannot undo what's been done. They cannot replace. If they could replace it, you'd feel a whole lot better about it. If if they can undo it, you'd you'd feel a whole lot better about it. But the problem is, they there's nothing that can be done. So now you have a choice and it's one of two things. They, they took something, it can't be replaced. So here are your options. Since there's nothing that can be done about it, you can either do with what you do with everything else for which nothing can be done about. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. Or you can live mad, live angry, live bitter, live upset, live in the prison of the past for the rest of your life. You, When you think about that thing, when you think about that, you can either say, you know what, Lord, I'm releasing that to you. Every time you think, Lord, I'm releasing that to you. That's yours. I'm, I'm not. I'm not living in that. Or when you think about it, you could take a big, huge swig of that poison. Those are our choices. I, I can either take a swig of the poison or I can say, Lord, I'm giving this glass to you. I'm releasing this to you. Every time I think about it, every time it comes to mind, look, I, you know what? I've forgiven. I'm forgiving it. They don't owe me. Lord, that's yours. They don't owe me. They can't replace it. They can't undo it. And they don't owe me. Lord, I'm giving that to you. Or I can take a swig of that poison and replay it in my mind and think about what should have happened and think about how I should have responded and think about how it hurt me and think about how bad it was. And think about what I would do if I could do. The best thing you could do is every time it comes to mind, say, I'm not drinking that poison. Lord, I'm releasing it to you. They don't owe me. You can take care of it much better than I can. I'm giving it to you. Lord, this is tough. It's not easy. But I know that your Holy Spirit gives us the power to do all things. Lord, help us to not drink the poison. Give us what we need by the power of your Spirit to release our hurts, 
to release the offenses of other people to you. For some of us, Father, these, these are grave offenses. Lord, and I, I pray for that person who's really hurting right now, who's really dealing with some stuff, who's really being tortured by some stuff. Release them from me, Father. Don't allow the enemy to mess with their minds not one more day. Break them out of that prison. Help them to see you in your light. Thank you for the freedom that we have in you. For the peace that we have in you. For the love that we have in you. For the restoration that we have in you. Help us to walk in it. We thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless y'all, man. Thank y'all for hanging out with me this morning. Sincerely hope that it was worth your time. If you hadn't yet hit that share button, if you would, man, uh, hit that share button. And uh, yeah, share this with somebody. If you're on YouTube, man, do that thumbs up for me. Uh, and if you hadn't subscribed to the YouTube channel, Dr. A. Nathan Young and Community Church, uh, please head on over there and hit that subscribe button. I hope each and every one of you have an amazing, amazing, amazing day. Uh, hope that uh, the, the Lord is with you wherever you go. And if it's the Lord's will, I'll uh, see you right back here tomorrow morning on Jumpstart Live. God bless.